now we will talk about the critical component of a talent acquisition strategy and uh, here we will discuss the introduction, the business case is old and new and what does onboarding really mean. Uh, uh, in these uh, different strategies by the different companies have been adopted and then we have to see that uh, which one will be the uh, more suitable. However, it is also true that is uh, with the organization to organization this uh, acquisition strategy will vary um, as per the vision of the organization, uh, as, as per the uh, size of the organization, uh, as per the uh, turnover, uh, employee turnover and the annual turnover, financial turnover of the organization. So, naturally it will be differentiating as we have seen in the different company. It will depend also depend on the nature of industries are there. So, we have seen some of the uh, service industries, some of the manufacturing industries right. Now, the significance of this shift is that for the first time employees were being impacted by the preferences and choices of this dominant part of their workforce and they quickly realized that to be competitive it was critical that they adopt to these changing needs. Now, there is a talent war, we have discussed earlier also the talent war is there and if the organization really wants to get the talented employees, then definitely they have to design their strategy on the basis of the employees where uh, the choices and the choices will be on this dominant part of their workforce. So, everybody wants the talented employees and if this is the requirement then definitely in that case they have, they have to be very very uh, critical and competitive which they adopt to changing needs are there. What we know about members of this population is that and they are interested in creating a quality of life for themselves right that is not entirely focused on their careers is there. So, what it, what it means? It means that that is the whenever we are talking about the quality of life right then in the quality of life uh, uh, here two things I would like to mention. Now, how, how we define the quality of life right. So, therefore, here for the talented people it goes like this work life enrichment. work life enrichment. So, therefore, they define the quality of life is not only the life, they are not focused only on the work. So, mm, there was a period in which, in which the, everybody was talking about the work life, work life, work life right, but now it, it is not the work life, it is the work and life uh, that is the enrichment is there. So, this is the quality of life for themselves and that is not entirely focused you may be surprised to see this word not, it is not entirely focused on their careers. So, therefore, nowadays the generation is making the combo of both work and life. Millionaires are motivated by collecting expenses that will help them to grow as people and achieve their life goals, including those that are not work related. This is a very very interesting point is there and uh, this is fact. I also having uh, this um, type of the experiences where the uh, these generations are having the uh, very cautious, very cautious uh, uh, about the career, career goals, hmm? their life goals right and not entirely on the career not only into life goals and they are not the goals which are not work related and that we have to understand and learn and then adopt, adoptability is required to work with this generation. So, suppose you are having a meeting and a uh, very important point is uh, going to discuss and uh, suddenly your um, junior colleague may come and say that is he has to go. So, earlier it, it was a shock, earlier time it was a shock that is the boss is conducting the meeting and the follower is a subordinate or that uh, your junior colleague uh, that uh, he is saying that he has to go. So, then uh, the what the boss would have said right 
that is the early in earlier time it, it was like this that is oh such an important thing is going on and then you are leaving right you can't but now you learn because if you want to keep these talented employees with you you have to provide them the job satisfaction and if job satisfaction and then you have to ask oh what is the issue right is everything okay role is change so then he will say yes everything is okay but he has to go to pick up his daughter it is a school time closing uh, school closing time so he has to pick up the daughter and he has to go and then the rest of the meetings he will understand from the his colleagues those who are attending the meeting or he will come and discuss with you later on and you have to say yes yes no problem go and take care because you have to also understand that is the if the school is closed the daughter is standing waiting for the father right then who is responsible right so therefore it is better that is the father goes and picks up the daughter and then uh, rest of the things can be discussed later so they are very clear about the work life enrichment right so this is the interesting part another part of this reshaping of the workplace is the their beautiful words are there in management so what is it now the workplaces are reshaping reshaping is there you will not say there is a problem problem in this type of the generation is this type of problem. no no not a problem it is reshaping society is reshaping and if it is reshaping you also contribute to reshape it for place is the expectation that all new hires receive a comprehensive and consistent onboarding experiences this is another challenge that is the whatever these new hires are there then they will receive a they, they are supposed to receive a comprehensive and consistent onboarding ex experience you have to ensure so the as usual when we give the example of the daughter in law so when she is entering first time in the in law's house the experience should be onboarding experience how it should be comprehensive and consistent so therefore in that case full care has been taken care of right so this is required in the in the case of this uh, the reshaping of the workplaces there anyone who has been in the workforce for a while can relate to the fact that most onboarding has not been either comprehensive or consistent every daughter in law is not uh, the welcomed by the way she should have been welcomed that is the report so therefore most onboarding has not been has not been either comprehensive or consistent and in spite of this too many times looks like a sink or swim so you prove yourself that you deserve to be the daughter in law of this house right you have to prove your capability so either you pr prove your capability or divorce bye bye so there is a sink or swim so therefore many times looks like a sink a swing test of uh, fitting into an organization into a family and figuring out how to be successful and uh, it has to see that is the how it is going to be the successful right so here we will see that is the there will be the uh, the onboarding that is the when they are uh, uh, coming uh, joining the organization or the family first time ensure that is it is a proper welcome is done organizations are learning that to recruit and keep the right people they must be prepared for their new hires to join and have a plan to address their specific needs right so you and actually uh, there is nothing wrong in that we have to understand so we cannot catch the monkey for peanuts if you want talented employees are to be there then we have to understand their specific needs and the hr departments and the leading organizations they are taking care of for getting up to speed 
if the organizations want to be the successful, organizations want to have uh, this type of the talented employees, organization have to give that uh, onboarding uh, beautiful reception. Otherwise, these new hires will quickly become disengaged. <laughs> so, daughter-in-law, right, she will stop participating in family functions and not deliver what they were hired to do and therefore, they will remain absent right physically or mentally or from their contribution often resulting in turnover or suboptimal results. So, a result of which what will happen when they are if they are not properly address their specific needs. Hmm? So, if they want something they want it and those needs are to be satisfied otherwise they will be disengaged. It is not disloyal, it is disengaged. And if the disengagement is there, you have to face the consequences. The way you are wanted to getting up the speed, no speed rather than you are pushing the vehicle. So, therefore, they become disengaged and not deliver what they were hired to do. They, so, as a result of which, what is required? That is the turnover will be there, employees turnover. So, you will find people are coming and going and the HR department is uh, asking and exit interviews are there, and there is a proper file is there, proper recording is done, proper discussion is going on, the board meetings are there, but finally what turnover will be there or suboptimal results are there. We have seen both the disengagement and the suboptimal results that are produced when new hires do not reach their potentials. Right. So, therefore, it is the whenever the new hires they join, they want to reach to a particular um, heights, they want to contribute also, they want to make a proper contribution. So, they do not reach their potential is there. Many if not all of these scary statistics that started to be collected in the mid to late 90s are still true today. Dr. Michel Watkins in his book, The First 90 Days got our attention by highlighting that 40 percent of the all new leaders fail within the first 18 months on the job. That is there the onboarding time. So, therefore, like uh, those 7 days, wo din, right? it is important that is the first 90 days, how is the treatment and that will decide to continue with this family or not to continue with this family, right? And within the first 18 months, it will be decided that is the whether to continue or not to continue. So, therefore, it, it is the uh, there is that scary statistics because now, now, now you see that is the in many organizations are trying their best, Many families are trying to retain their daughter-in-laws, no, daughter-in-laws are not ready to stay. So, therefore, in that case, there is a scary statistics is there, right. So, therefore, in that case, the first 90 days, they got our attention, right. And what to do then? That we will discuss, that is how that talent acquisition management is to be done. So, how to retain the daughter-in-laws that I will talk later. So, the leaders fail within the first 18 months on the job. Egon Zenzer also conducted its own onboarding survey and found that there is a 50 50 chance of failure, very high no, um, risky ratio, right? That is a 50 50 chance, 50 percent either yes, 50 percent either no. Failure for new hires who do not receive a formal onboarding experience. And, le and are left to sink or swing in their new roles. So, therefore, in that case, that is the it is very much clear that is if they are not getting the formal onboarding experience, right. So, then it will be difficult for them to continue within with the organization and therefore, uh, they will decide then what to do. The abiding group has also contributed to the body of research data in onboarding and has produced several reports over the last 10 years. 
So, in, in, interestingly there are lot of studies have been done and the data have been produced in the last 10 years and uh, uh, they, they, they focus on the positive impact of a formal onboarding experience. So, there is a solution, so do not worry. So, people will remain, <laughs> daughter in law will remain in the house. So, that is the positive impact of formal onboarding experience is there. And in the February 2010 report, the research states that 90 percent of all new hires decide to leave or state their new jobs within the first 6 months. Now, this, this, this particular research that is more alarming. In the earlier slide, we were having the breathing time 18 months. So, if you have not done the onboarding properly, you can compensate it, try to compensate to retain the daughter in law. But now, this study, right, it talks about that is not 18 months. If the onboarding welcome is not properly done, reception is not done properly, then only in 6 months you have to decide. To compensate that experience, yes or no, that you have to decide. In the same report, there are also data that suggest that onboarded employees have 2.5 times more performance improvements within the first 3 months than those without onboarding experiences there. It is interesting that is those onboarded employees, those who are without onboarding experience they are there, they are in the first within the first 3 months, they are, they are putting 2.5 times more efforts to perform. So, they are, they are trying to give their best, they want to prove, you are saying no, you are asking sink or swim. So, they were trying to swim, in the first 3 months they were trying to swim, 2.5 times is there. Organizations have the opportunity to aid or update a critical component of their talent acquisition strategy with a comprehensive and consistent onboarding program. So, it is becoming very important that is the you have to create the opportunity and that is why when we talk about the organization culture, family culture, family climate, organizational climate, surrounding environment, support, trust, right. So, therefore, that add or update a critical component of their talent acquisition strategy. So, you have to be also careful while visiting this uh, matrimony.com that is please see that candidate is proper having the matching with a comprehensive and consistent onboarding program or not, right. So, therefore, they have to uh, the opportunity to aid or update a critical component that will be remembering, remembering one. The talent acquisition process has evolved into a sophisticated system of talent needs assessment, succession planning, workforce segmentation, employment branding and the candidate relationship management while leveraging the technology solutions and using metrics and analytics up to the measure the success. Now, I will take one by one. So, therefore, talent needs assessment, how to do that? how to identify what is the need is there. So, that, that is the best way is that is the participation, meetings and interaction and your expectations. Now, here then you will say sir there, there is a dating also, mm, dating is done, but still uh, there are diverses right. So, why you identified the need assessment and then we told that is the yes these needs will be fulfilled, we are fulfilling but still uh, there are diverses, talent is not continuing with the organization they are going. So, why it is so? So, therefore, the talent need assessments the honesty is required. So, at the time of interview what the candidate does? Does he say any weakness uh, honestly? There are few like you, but not all right. So, what they do? They hide. So, during dating time, many of us must be having this type of experience that whatever the dating time was there and after marriage, oh my god, right. So, therefore, that oh my god, OMG effect, right, that is a talent need assessments is important, that is uh, how your needs are there. Then the succession planning, 
<laughs> not in case of the marriage please every every example don't connect there every topic don't connect there succession planning means the replacement <laughs> so therefore in that case if if the someone is our uh, uh, employee is living then in that case how to fulfill the requirement of that particular um, employees vacancy. So, therefore, that is a succession planning that has to be system has to be developed. Workforce segmentation. Now, now you see that is the you, you have to classify talented and normal regular employees. So, those who are talented employees that segmentation has to be done, that need assessment has to be done and proper care has to be taken to retain them and reduce the employees turnover. Similarly, employment branding this you this you can connect with the that family example right that you belong to a such a khandan such a family which is having the very highest image in the society maybe money or not that is a different issue right <laughs> but what is important is employment branding so you will get the perks or you will not get the perks that is a different issue but what is important the name the brand the brand in which you are working do you think that what image you are creating of yourself in the society how people are recognizing you and that is called the employment branding and candidate relationship management naturally it is just like a customer relationship management candidate is also internal customer so we have to understand the candidates the expectations the career path goal achievements that we have to understand while leveraging the technology solutions and using metrics and analytics to measure the success that is what type of the success is is required are the um, expected or wish or dream of the talented employee and where he wants to go and then the rest of the all the service uh, departments they support the employee so that the employee's need assessment is fulfilled onboarding is a natural extension of the organization's talent acquisition strategy that is what type of the talent acquisition strategy is there and the way you will acquire the talent accordingly your strategy will be um, give the results and organizations will benefit from investing in developing and delivering a robust onboarding experience. So, there should be a proper structured framework for the onboarding experience. We represent onboarding as a business process that is included in an organization's overall talent management life cycle. So, what is that? That is the in the talent management life cycle right from the acquisition right then deployment then developments then compensation rewards right and then assessment measurement and then finally is there is the separation so right from the acquisition to separation that life cycle because the one who is born he has to die one who is joined he has to retire right so therefore in that case separation is uh, confirmed but what is important is this that is the do we know that is organizations overall talent management life cycle how organization is taking care of the embryonic stage growth stage maturity stage and the declining stage each section has a beginning and an end and yet each builds on one another as employee progress through their careers. So, but the life still goes, people make the life vibrant, they contribute in the life, though they know that is there is a separation in the organization, but in the organization they contribute, they know that one day they have to retire, they know that one day they have to go, one day there will be separation, but it will not be accidental rather than it is the planned way it is structured it is planned and then accordingly there will be the carriers will be there so here we will see that is the how talent management cycle goes as i mentioned like the organization life cycle 
right and in the organization life cycle that is the it goes from the onboarding selection of the internal pro promotion. So, that positions new leaders and associates to understand an organization's vision, strategies, goals and culture that is the first step. So, when they are entering into the first step there will be the vision, strategies, goals and culture awareness. So, when the daughter in law entering into a house she knows about that what is the culture of the organization what the uh, uh, family what is what is the in the uh, uh, expectations what is the vision what is the where where the family has to lead in which direction family has to lead what are the value systems and therefore those value systems that will decide to achieve the goals the strategies means value system so uh, this will be that will be done on the onboarding and when it is done in 18 months or 6 months what happens performance management starts that your talented employees that uh, a, that a talent acquisition where you have uh, selected the diamonds from these uh, different uh, top notch uh, places then they will start performing then the leadership development will be there. that is to lead, lead the family, lead to organization and then you have to perform on that. So, as a leadership development then, then you will continue your journey and then there will be the succession planning, one has to go other has to come on his place that is organization right. So, organization never stops for anybody. So, therefore, in that case these onboarding performance management leadership will go for the succession planning as a result of which the employees from the internal promotion they were they will be selected. So, these employees will be selected from the internal promotions. One recent example was a woman who raised her hand in a conference presentation session to respond to our question who is using technology to deliver their onboarding experience. She answered by describing her organization's learning management system LMS and how it delivers online compliance training to their new associates. So, that is becoming the example. The best practice definition of onboarding is a process using the three pillars of knowledge, relationship and feedback right. So, getting the knowledge, developing the relationship and the feedback that aligns its new leaders and associates with the organization's vision, strategies, goal and culture. Onboarding success results from the partnership of the new hires, their managers and HR business partners. What is also very important is to create an effective onboarding experience that is compatible with the culture of your organization. And therefore, if you are going by this type of the compatibility, then definitely uh, there will be the uh, more retention of the talented employees uh, rather than that is after 18 months or 18 6 months there will be the turnover of the employees. The simplest way to determine the ideal length of your onboarding experience is to ask how long are people considered new in our organization and in more established organization newness is dependent on the culture and the, uh, how the organization accepts new hires. So, therefore, in that case this is very very important very interesting point that is the newness, how long it will be new. So, therefore, be let them be the part of family rather than telling them that is this is a trainee, this is new right. So, that, that, that should not be there. So, in this online experience it becomes uh, very very important that is the whenever you are going for the onboarding process please ensure that is the employees are ready to continue in your organization for the long period of time they are also going for that particular purpose that is the how they will be satisfied at the workplace 
they will contribute at the workplace and therefore in that case they will come out with the new and new ideas and new culture and development and that you what we say that is a disengagement will not be there rather than engagement will be there. If you are keeping that engagement that will be done. So, finally, what I can say research suggests that more new hires are now fully integrated into their organizations until they have experienced a complete year business cycle. Yet we know they make their decision to stay or go long before that year is up. So, therefore, it is very important that is we take care of the your talented employees onboarding their newness uh, is for a limited period of time you adopt them acquire them and be, be making them the part of their the vision strategies goals and culture. If we do that so very soon they will be the part of the family daughter in law will be very much a member of the family very fast right and uh, as soon as you do it then definitely the, the talent will continue for long time and contribute also engaged also. Thank you.